Hi guys, Jamie Humphreys here for Six String Alliance and today we are taking a look at The Boys Are Back In Town by Thin Lizzy. So there's a couple of reasons why I wanted to look at The Boys Are Back In Town. And the first reason is that I've just contributed to a video over on Produce Like A Pro with my good friend, Warren Hewitt. Warren's doing a breakdown of the track and we decided to look at some of the guitar parts. So he asked me to contribute. And uh, from that, we decided it would be a cool idea for me to take a look at the song in a little bit more detail over here on Six String Alliance. Now, the second reason is a result of me reanalyzing the track. I went back over, I haven't looked at this track in probably 20 odd years. Basically, I, I transcribed it for a guitar book. I did it for a couple of DVDs and basically thought that what I'd done was, was pretty accurate. And uh, how wrong I was, I've realized that I've made a couple of fundamental errors. Now, probably 90% of what I presented in those old transcriptions and lessons was correct, albeit that uh, maybe going back now and looking at some of the fingerings, I could uh, get those better. But there was a couple of things that made me realize that I've been playing the song wrong. Uh, obviously, my title of this video, uh, uh, The Boys Are Back In Town, You've Been Playing It Wrong, it's kind of, uh, I've actually been playing it wrong. So I thought it would be good to go back and look at this and correct a couple of things and reanalyze the track. Now, I've also done a little bit of hunting on the internet just to try and uh, uh, justify my choices and I've discovered a few people are also making similar mistakes that I was making. And on doing some research, I'm uh, I'm fairly confident that what I'm going to present to you today is a little bit more of an accurate insight in how this classic track should be performed. Now, this track is taken from the 1976 album Jailbreak and features the legendary guitar duo of Brian Robertson and Scott Gorham. Now, that original version or versions of Thin Lizzy, should I say, when Phil Lynott was still alive, has boasted some of the most incredible guitar players in rock history. We've had Gary Moore, we've had John Sykes, Snowy White, Midjour, and also the original guitar player, Eric Bell. But probably the most classic and best loved lineup has to be the guitar duo of Brian Robertson and Scott Gorham. So this track was originally recorded on a Les Paul and Marshall combination. For this lesson, I'm using my brand new Gibson Les Paul Modern. And as usual, I'm plugged into my Mesa Badlander head and I'm coming out of the onboard cab clone IR and I'm using a Mesa 4x12 impulse response. So before before we get into the track, there's a couple of things I'd like to discuss. First of all, the rhythm. It's important that you get the correct groove when you're playing this track. It's not a straight eighth note rhythm. It's swung eighth note. So it has a one and two and three and four and rhythm. It's a, a, a swing groove basically. And it's essential that you get that correct when you're playing this track. Now, another important thing to remember is a lot of the chord changes appear on the off beat, which is the end of the beat. So one, two, three, four, and two, three, four. Uh. So that again, that is really essential when it comes to performing this track correctly. So when it comes to the rhythm parts, although I'm going to be showing you the correct chords, I'm not going to be analyzing every single little detail of how the rhythm was played. I'm going to be using a certain amount of artistic license and just performing this, the chords stylistically to give you the correct feel of the track. And one last thing, I am also tuned to E flat. The original track, all the guitars are dropped down by a semitone. So uh, I've taken that tuning for today. So let's kick things off by taking a look at the introduction. I'm going to play it through for you first of all, and then we're going to break it down. <laughs> So 
So the introduction is based around three power chords. We have an A5, a B5, and a D5. <laughs> So between the A5 and the B5 chord, we have this little guitar fill, which is based around an open D. We have a fourth fret of the D string. Play that three times. Then we play the second fret D. Fourth fret A. And then back to the second fret D. Now let's put that lick in context with the chords. It's really important there for you to maintain that swung eighth note groove and make sure that you change the chords on the offbeat on that, on the and of each beat, basically. Okay, so now let's take a look at the verse and I'll play it through first of all. Okay, so the verse is basically a doubled guitar part and the guitars are doing slightly different things in each side. And what I do is normally just play a composite of both parts. We're gonna kick things off with the A5 chord. We have a C sharp minor seven. We have a D major. Then we have an F sharp minor seven. Now, on the original uh, recording, the other guitar plays an, an F sharp five, but he actually um, catches that uh, the fourth fret of the G string ever so slightly. So you get this. It's like a sus four chord, which is, is quite a cool addition if you want to try adding that. So A5, C sharp minor seven, D, F sharp minor seventh. Back to a C sharp minor seventh, F sharp minor seventh. We have a B minor seventh, and then we have a B minor seventh with an E in the bass. Now you don't have to play that E in the bass. Obviously, that would be played by the bass player. But if you're playing it unaccompanied, if you include that open E string, it gives you the implied harmony. Okay, so for the next part of the verse, we have the A5 chord again. C sharp minor seven. We have the D major. And this is the big mistake that I made. Like many people, I played an F chord. And it is not an F chord, it is a D minor seven. Which is basically the same notes as an F chord, but the voicing is different. And also what it does, it enables us to have some kind of close voice leading down to the next chord, which is C sharp minor seven. And also during, I think it's either the second or the third verse, I think it's the third verse where you have this, where they add that high note on the top as well. So uh, yeah, that was my big mistake. So let's just put that together one more time. A. can really hear how the song, it, it, it basically sounds like the song now. That F chord just sounded to me, it never sounded right, even though it was the correct notes, but obviously in the wrong position and the, the wrong order. And also it was a big jump from that uh, F chord all the way down to the C sharp minor seven. So D minor seven, C sharp minor seven, F sharp minor seven. We have the B minor seven and then the B minor seventh with that E in the bass. So let's just play through those chords slowly so you can play along. Here we go.
Now, with that section, you can obviously embellish the chords. You can add your little finger on the top E on those minor seventh shapes. As I said, that occurs sometimes. <laughs> Now, also during the second verse, on the second time round, as we reintroduce the, the first A chord, we have this little guitar fill. Which is just based around the A major pentatonic scale. You're hammering on two to four on the D, two on the G, bend four up a whole tone, release that and pull off the two and then you're playing four on the D string. Okay, so now let's take a look at the chorus. I'm gonna play it through for you first of all. Okay, so the chorus is pretty much the same as the introduction, apart from the fact that when we play that A chord, we add our second finger on the third fret of the B and our third finger on the fourth fret of the D, so we play a D over A chord. <laughs> So now let's take a look at the harmony guitar part. And this is that memorable melody line that you just instantly associate with harmony guitar. And this was a section that I also wanted to look at again, mainly for the, for the, for the fingerings. Uh, I played it in a different position and transcribed it in a dis different position, which on further investigation, I've now corrected. But also the fact that this is in, in fact a three part harmony. I always, thought it was a, a two guitar harmony with a little overdub at the end, when in fact it isn't. You have one harmony in one side, we have a harmony in the middle, and then we have the same harmony as the middle tucked away in the right side, which has a slightly different ending. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna play all three parts together for you. <laughs> Now, first of all, the uh, the lower harmony, I, I never quite played that right. You're basically playing seven hammer on to nine on the A. So we pick that, uh, that seventh fret A twice. Then we play seven on the D, play that twice. And then we play an open A. Then we're up to the ninth fret D, back to the open A. Okay, then we're playing uh, nine on the D, then again, seven on the D, and then nine on the A. So put that together. And that's based around a triplet rhythm and also we have quarter note triplet. Now to finish that melody off. So we're playing seven up to nine on the A, seven on the D. We slide nine up to 11 on the D, back down to nine, seven, nine on the A, and then four to two on the A and then the A5 power chord. So the next harmony is played on the D and the G string. So we pick the D string at the seventh and the hammer on to nine. And then we play six on the G. And then back to the seven on the D. So. Then we're up to nine on the G. Back to seven on the D. And then we, uh, we play seven on the G down to six and then nine on the D. So 
So we then have another example of that harmony part, which is being played in the right channel, but it has a slightly different ending. What we do is we bend seven up a whole tone on the G, back down, six on the G, seven on the D, seven on the A, five on the A, and then four on the A. So I put that at the end of that, of that figure. Okay, so now let's take a look at the bridge section. So I'll play it through first of all, and then we'll break it down. Okay, so the bridge section starts off with a triplet rhythm and we're playing a D sus four chords. We're using eighth note triplets and then quarter note triplets, which are a cross rhythm. We're playing across the beats and get this. <laughs> we we'll then have a C sharp minor seventh, F sharp minor seventh, B minor seventh, B minor seven over E. And then we have an F sharp five. And during this section, there are a few uh, triplet pick rhythms on the A and the D string. So you can just uh, um, pick out any of the notes, really. I think it's feel free to sort of uh, improvise and uh, do your own thing there or just play on the root note. He's kind of doing that thing, just going between the different strings with, a, with an alternate pick triplet rhythm. We then have the D sus4 to D chord again. Up to the C sharp minor seven. Down to F sharp minor seven. And then we have the uh, B minor seven, but we're adding our little finger on the fifth fret top E. That kind of thing. And then we're down to the F sharp five again. With that uh, palm muted uh, triplet rhythm. Now, during the final chorus, we have a little drop down section which has a slight variation on the chords that you hear in the chorus. So let's just take a listen to that first of all. <laughs> So although this section is based around the same chords that we hear in the chorus, we have a little bit of a, a variation on our A5 chord. We're basically playing sort of Chuck Berry uh, rock and roll style chords. We're playing an A5 open A, two on the D, and A6, which is open A, and four on the D, and an A7, which is open A, and five on the D. And we're playing, a, a like I said, like a rock and roll style riff. We then have our B5, up to our D5, and then we have this little guitar fill where we're playing seven on the A, sliding up to nine, and then we play seven on the D, and then back to the nine on the A, and we slide away. That time we start off on the A5, and we play the A6, A7, back to A6, and then back to the A5 to A6. So now we introduce another guitar harmony section. This is another short solo. So let's take a look at that and then we'll break it down. So this was another section that I wanted to re-examine, mainly for the positions in which we play this, uh, this short solo. We're starting out on the sixth fret of the G. And we're dropping down to the second fret G. We 
There we're playing five on the D, two on the G, four on the G, and then four on the D. We repeat that. We play a D5 power chord, and then we play an E5 power chord with that open low E. And then we just repeat. So now let's look at the harmony parts of that melody. We're starting off on the ninth fret of the G. Down to the sixth fret G. So that's six, seven, nine. And then seven on the D. And we just repeat that. D5 to E5. Repeat. So now we're on to the final section, which features that climbing harmony part, which is based around that melody that we've seen, that iconic melody. Now, I was always under the impression that this was just two guitars, whereas I've now come to the conclusion that I think it's actually a six part harmony. So what we're gonna do first of all is I'm gonna play it and uh, you're gonna see six of me on screen, layering it up, and then we're gonna take a look at what's going on. <laughs> So we kick things off with our original twin guitar harmony. I'm just going to play the two parts just to refresh your memory. <laughs> That harmony section repeats twice, and then on the third time, another guitar harmony comes in, and the other two parts remain. This is the surprising thing. I've never paid attention and noticed that these harmony parts continue throughout to the end of the track. So this is the next harmony. <laughs> We're playing five on the B to six on the G, and then we're picking six, hammering onto seven. We pick that twice, and then five on the B. Then we're playing five on the top E, back to the six on the G, and then we have seven on the B, five on the B and seven on the G. Obviously, this is all based around the A major scale. Now that guitar part continues with the other two guitar parts. We have a three part harmony and a fourth harmony is introduced and you hear a slide into this A note. So uh, I drew the conclusion that that was possibly being played in this position. Again, I've referenced lots of videos and seen a variety of different guitar players during the history of the band playing it in a variety of different places. So I've chosen to play it here. So we're sliding into 10 on the B. <laughs> So you're playing nine, uh, picking that twice and hammering up to 11. And then play 10 on the B again. Obviously that's nine to 11 on the G, I should say. Then we have a nine on the top E, back to the nine on the G. And then we have 12 on the B, 10 on the B, and then 11 on the G. So 
So at that point, we 100% have four harmonies running. Now, as far as I can tell, all of those harmonies remain, and then we have another harmony introduced, which is this one. So that's nine on the top E, 10 on the B. Repick that and hammer on to 12. And then nine. 12 on the top E, back to the B string. Then 10 on the top E, nine on the E, and 12 on the B. And then we have the final part, which is added, and we're up to the 17th fret of the B, to the 14, and then 14, 15, 17. And then we have 17 on the top E. That's a 14 on the b And then we're bending 17. Release that. You know, some of the positions are debatable, as I said, I've seen and played in various positions, but I am pretty com much convinced that all of these harmonies, all of these parts just layer, which is something that I had never uh, even imagined, never thought about before until I heard an isolated guitar track. Okay, so there you have it, my reworking and reanalysis of The Boys Are Back In Town. Like I said, some pretty big discoveries for me, especially on the, the chord voicing front. I can't believe I've been playing that chord voicing wrong for all these years. Pretty shameful of me, really. So uh, it's kind of nice to come back with fresh ears and also modern technology. When I was transcribing this stuff like 20 odd years ago for those old guitar books, there were no isolated tracks. You know, everything was done with cassette or CD. So now being exposed to stuff that we find on YouTube, you know, you just type in isolated guitar, you find everything. It's really nice to be able to listen to these tracks and also using programs like RX, Isotope RX enables you to separate the tracks, which is absolutely genius. So I'm pretty sure that uh, the, the harmony thing is also correct. I'm pretty convinced. I'd be interested to see what you guys think of that. But, uh, you know, check out the isolated tracks that you can hear online and uh, you'll uh, hopefully see where I'm coming from. Now, as per usual with my lessons here, follow the link in the description and head on over to the Six String Alliance website where you can download the tab and the free guitar profile to accompany this lesson. And as always, if you don't already, please subscribe. Anyway, that's it from me. I look forward to seeing you here very soon. Bye for now.